Hello, students. Now, don't ask me how much time I have been busy by trying to calculate to, uh, to uh, not to calculate, but to uh, to get my video well. Because every time I was speaking, but I have I when I listened to it, I didn't hear something. Don't ask me why. But do I? What is my idea to do? Um, first, some repetition of uh, divergence theorem and Stokes. And then I want to do some new thing, and that uh, is the vector potential. That are the things I like to do. And that repetition of the divergence theorem and Stokes, I want to do one that, that you keep in mind so that you have some, if you, if you want to, if you have the idea to use it and you know that you already know a little bit from how, and that you have not constant to search in the book or something somewhere else from, oh, this theorem, how does it work? The divergence theorem, that first. Um, now, what do you do? That has to do with something uh, that you uh, that you see if, if some if you have some air of water or something like that and it is streaming, if, be, if a, a little part, uh, if a little um, uh, volume will become greater or smaller or that the volume keep the same. Now, and, uh, and that is the, the following, that if you have some little volume, and here I calculated the volume, and then I multiply it by the divergence of some vector field, and that in some point uh, in that volume that I can measure if it go, if something uh, it becomes bigger or, or not or it, it keeps the same by doing the following that I keep that I take the integral around the boundary of that volume and then uh, if I, I have a volume in R uh, if the volume is in R3 then the boundary is in R2 is two dimensional so I have an integral over two dimensional space and then I can measure the flux of the vector field which goes out of that surface this is the out of that boundary of that volume now uh, if you have a, a great volume, you can cut that volume into pieces, all kinds of pieces. And if you look to those, uh, for instance, to some, some, uh, to this part of it, and uh, I will take some other color than we, uh, if, if we look to this part of it, uh, what do you see? Now, if you have two rectangles close together now what and if you look to that flux what do you see for instance uh, you have the same orientation in all those pieces on all those pieces be careful with the orientation then what goes out here goes in goes out with the other one so the the netto things if you, if you add them together, and maybe I can better make it a little bit greater. So, and this because the, the, this, uh, uh, so what comes in goes also out. And and I will do this. Uh, I have about little pieces, but I can sketch it great so with some eyeglass I see some little pieces here and then you have some orientation and always 
the, the most of the time you take the orientation counterclockwise and then what comes what goes out here that goes out from the other one so the netto things if you add those together you see you have that it will be almost zero and then if you go along that rule uh, rule uh, all those pieces in this part here now what do you see then you have at the end you see yeah, there you have nothing anymore so here you have here you have netto zero but the the, the important p important part are the outside boundary of your volume there you will see here you, you, there, there is not, not coming something there's not going something uh, uh, if, if something goes out there is not some some other thing that goes in so you have not zero anymore so if you use this if you use this part here if you use that for all those little pieces and you you add that together now then you get that the integral over the volume the integral over the volume of the divergence of your vector field will be equal to the flux on the boundary of your volume so the flux and that we can calculate by taking the inner product of the vector field with the unit normal on the surface and yeah we what what to more to say be always uh, careful uh, the divergence that is some element out of r you you you, you will fill in x y z and if you if you calculate the divergence you will get some number and uh, here you have a vector field a vector field and a normal so you have vectors but you have here the inner product and be careful there is not a normal product now you have an inner product so and the result of the inner product with that uh, with that vector that will be again some the real number and so you can integrate so be careful with all those kind of things that is the divergence theorem okay just a little bit to remember from maybe you can use this one here and that you see from oh yes the flux the, the, the little volume ties the divergence of the vector field gives you what goes out of that the boundary of that volume and that is the that it was the flux where we started with okay so here you have the important theorem and that we that will be used a lot and then the other one that is stokes stokes has to do with the rotation of a vector field and then uh, what then now if you have a little area then you have the the, the, the a little area times and then you take the rotation of a vector field the rotation is some vector so you have to take the inner product with the unit normal and and if you take that inner product with the unit normal you get some number some real number and if you uh, do this one here you you get uh, almost the integral along the boundary of that area of the vector field inner product ds and be careful at it you, you, uh, and what do you do um, now you, you have uh, also if you have uh, two little pieces now you have some you, you you have some orientation so you are on this you know, this right side of that rectangle you are going up 
you have the same orientation on the other one that goes down and you'll see here that the netto result will be zero and if you do that for all those pieces on the, on the same blue or orange thing I, i've just token uh, if, if you are doing that on some all those parts and you do the same if you cut this into pieces now you see here you are going down uh, now you are uh, sorry and here i have uh, this one is good here I, yes this is going up yeah so you are going you have all the same orientation so you are going up here you are going down there up here down there up here down there etc up here down there and here you are going this one here and here you are going here now you see if you add all those results all all those little pieces together this one will if, if you add them together that will give you zero but here you have nothing so the result will be something of the outer boundary of your great volume and so what is then the the, the so if you have added all those pieces together what what does the, the stokes uh, telling you stokes is telling you the integr the integral over that area over the curl of your vector field or the rotation of your vector field in a product with the unit normal on that area that is equal to the integral on the closed uh, on, a, on a closed curve and that closed curve that is the boundary of your area and then you have to take the inner product uh, of f of the vector field with your ds term and maybe I can better write down here dr term and that is maybe better to do and the the fat r and what does it mean now you you have your boundary of your area you can parameterize that boundary and if you parameterize it you get for your dr term you get then the effect the, the velocity the speed uh, at that point times dt and so here you see this is a vector this is an if you are in r3 this is an element out of r3 and here you see also the speed is an element out of r3 but if you take the inner product with that dr term let me uh, i will write an a uh, uh, line then, then that me, i mean that, that you have there a vector then you see that you have your vector field and then inner product with your velocity vector dt and then here you have the inner product and so you get again here some element out of r and here the same thing here also if you calculate the curl of your vector field in a product of the unit normal you get some element out of r and that you integrate over the area over a two-dimensional part so be careful with look always from where what what is a vector and what is some element out of r and uh, and and if you see some dot point uh, realize yourself from uh, what does it mean a, a multiplication or an inner product and here in this cases here uh, you have an inner product and also by the flux an inner product and maybe i can also better here uh, write down uh, dr and maybe that is better to do than the ds term okay now that's some repetition of uh, of uh, divergence theorem and stokes and now be careful
careful. Then in chapter of a section 16.2, a lot of uh, yeah, equalities. And yeah, if you if you want to know if they are good or not, uh, right out left, right out the right hand side, and see if they are if they you get the same expressions. Yes, and uh, that is that is the only thing I can say to prove. Now right out. Left hand side, right out the right, uh, the right hand. So right out left side, right out the right side, and then compare. Compare if they are equal. So see yeah, that the question will constantly be, is the, what you have written out on the left hand side, if that is equal to the right hand side. And yeah, and if you are, if you do it for one of those uh, things uh, and, and, it, and, and you see it doesn't go well, then there will be something wrong. Maybe you have done something wrong and you have to do it again and uh, Adams, the, what what uh, what the expression staying there and Adams, they are okay, no problem. So then, if you have not equals e uh, equal expressions, then something has been done wrong. Okay. Um, important. Uh, that is the the the. the I, I never understand why they are putting that be, below that factor differential in the identities, but I think the following is importance of importance. That is uh, the divergence of the curl of some vector field is always zero. And here is your look at your curl, your vector field is some vector, your curl is also a vector and if you calculated the divergence of that you get some number so this is an element out of r so you have to get zero now so you can also calculate the curl of the gradient of your vector uh, of some function i, I know i'm uh, i'm almost wrong i have some function so the phi goes from for instance, from R3 to R, so that, then you take the gradient, now the gradient gives you some vector, the curl you can take from a vector, and you get a vector out of it, and that had always to be the zero vector, so you have some element out of R3, and that is if you are busy in uh, in R3, and so uh, see the differences in uh, uh, in atoms. The uh, one is the small, and the other is a fat zero. A small zero and a fat zero. That small zero, that is an element out of R, and that fat zero, that is some vector, so that is an element of R3 or R2, it depends on uh, where you are busy. And then, yeah, how can you? Uh, uh, write it. How, how can you write it on some other way? Now the the divergence of some vector field 
that you can also write as the gradient factor and then the inner product with your vector fields and then you have your, your gradient that that is your that are, are taking those the, the 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 taking partial derivatives and then you take the inner product with your vector field and if you take that inner product you see what operations you have to do you get the first component of your vector field differentiated to x the second component differentiated to y and the last component the third component differentiated to z and that is exactly your divergence so i have now so you have here in a product in the triangle and uh, that uh, yeah, not a triangle I don't know how to say it in English but you have to uh, rotate a triangle and then you have the gradient so this one that is the gradient and that is of in uh, so so you so on that way you can write down uh, you can uh, right in, in short the grade uh, the divergent using that gradient and then the curl of a vector field that you can do as follows that you say i take the cross product of uh, of that gradient factor with the vector field and then the, because you have you know cross products what do you have? You have then the, the, on the first row e, j, k, x, y, z direction. And then you can, you see that gradient factor. So you'll get that operations you have to do. The, the, the derivative to x, derivative to y, derivative to z. And then you fill in your vector field. And then you can calculate that determinant. And that is not a real. It is not a an, 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 an real determinant because of if you are in linear algebra and you calculate a determinant, you get a number. But here we get out of this determinant, we get out a vector because the first row gives you the x, y, and z direction. So the so you see here that you can write your curl as the cross product of the gradient factor with the vector fields. Now and so, uh, and then so we can write down the following: the we uh, what did I what so I, I what did I tell to you? Uh, the divergence of the curl is zero. The divergence of the curl of an vector field is zero. Now then, the divergence that I can write with the triangle and then inner product with something and the curl I can write as the cross product of the gradient the, with the vector field and so here I have the same thing but then written in an other notation and you see here the divergence of it so this is exactly the same but only now written in some other uh, expressions so and what uh, and what did I so uh, what did I call? I also the curl uh, of the gradient of a vector field is always the zero vector. Now and so the gradient uh, and and I make again the 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 fault. I uh, you the gradient you can only take from the function and um, so and so you have the gradient of phi. And then the curl that is the cross product of that gradient factor with that factor there, and that is equal to some vector. And maybe I also write here down a zero with some line because you then I understand the, if I write down a zero, just a zero like that, I assure I I, uh, I know it is a, a number, and if I write this one here. I know it comes out of R3, yeah, or R2. It is this just uh, where we are, where you are busy with your problem, but you know it is a vector. 
and so here also um, the divergence no the, the look that is okay and this is the so here you have some some other way written so yeah for you can okay um, and what is then uh, an other thing oh yes that is the uh, Laplace here you have also triangle but then uh, Laplace operator and then you write down most of the time this um, and uh, Laplace op that, that you uh, you um, uh, so Laplace operator of some function, and you are then doing most of the time you have the second derivative of phi plus the second derivative of phi to y, and you add the second derivative of phi to z together so you have something with second derivatives and that of the first and, and the uh, second um, just of phi you take the second derivative to x second derivative to y second derivative to z and you add those together and this one here is again uh, is an uh, is an element out of r and uh, how can we write this here um, I think um, if I take the gradient of phi, I get that uh, uh, vector d phi dx, d phi dy, d phi dz. And so if I now take the inner product of the gradient with that expression here, I get the Laplace operator. Yes, that is okay. So, so if you want to write it in short, you do as follows. You have you saw then the Laplace operator of phi is nothing else than the gradient of phi, and then you take the inner product with the gradient. So here you see. Okay. And uh, so this is okay. And uh, you can also do the Laplace operator working on a vector field. And then uh, you are uh, you, nothing else than using the Lap, uh, Laplace operator on every component of your vector field. So you get the Laplace operator on the first component of your vector field, the Laplace operator working on your second uh, uh, component of your vector field, and the Laplace operator working on the last component of your vector field. So this is here you have then uh, the Laplace on a vector field. So but that is a little bit difficult to write down. Uh, um, yes, and yes, what uh, sometimes um, this is also written as the 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 the, the gradient squared times phi. But I'm not so. I, I don't don't like it so much. And then I have, I have more the feeling for I have more feeling to this one than the other one. But in certain sense, you are only telling the people of uh, of what you have to do, what operations you have to do. The the, the, La, the Laplace operator is some operation you do. And that is an operation with all kinds of second order derivatives. No, and that. Okay. Um, yes.
and then uh, be also yeah careful with uh, you, you have always to if you go to read books and so on uh, be careful read what they mean if you have for instance this expression here now then the G and the F are a vector field so therefore I am writing a line below because that I know from these are vectors and, and what is then uh, what, what, what do they mean now they mean the, the following uh, they mean that you have the first component of your G vector field you have to multiply and not some but just multiply by the derivative of x of your vector field and so you can go on with that second component of g and then you multiply the vector by the derivative to y of your vector field and maybe i can better write down here that you have the the part derivative to y of your vector field and here also you have your third component of the vector field of g you have to multiply by the component of your vector field differentiated to z so this is what you can do but but it is almost i find it always a little bit difficult to uh, so just uh, so just be careful it is always look in the books if you read something or some paper or something and they use this kind of formulas look and see what they mean okay now i think this is enough for uh, here and then the uh, next time because this is the last video of the week six so the uh, next time we will get the vector potential so this is not done at this moment uh, i have I have too much spent to all these formulas and, and rewriting these formulas and, and, and go so on. Uh, keep this in mind. That is maybe of importance if, if we uh, are calculating those factor potentials. This is an, uh, a really an important one. Yes, and then yeah, try to make exercises with that divergence theorem ended so this will be next time